First of all, I want to thank our fans and our, the Rutgers community for supporting us. And it was a terrific turnout today. Um, and I hope they understand that the process is has successful so far. Doesn't matter what the record is. Uh, we've learned how to compete with integrity. We've learned how to compete with composure. We're coming together as a team. Uh, our kids are doing terrific uh, off the floor. And uh, the process is, is successful. Is it a step ahead? Is it a step behind? I think we're right on target. Um, Obviously, we'd like to have won more games and uh, maybe had a few upsets, but I've never given up on our players um, through the tough times, and I don't think they've given up on me. So, I mean, Kerwin Accor is a perfect example. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard not having a winter season. It, it takes out a lot out of your emotional state. You know, you're, you're antsy to win. You're disappointed about losing. But our kids came to practice every day. And you know what? We've got other things to accomplish. We're coming to practice on Monday and going to Memphis on Tuesday to play the loser of the game today. Um, and we're looking to compete just even, even better. Eddie, what do you think was the difference down the stretch in the end, in the end of that game? Um, that, first of all, you had a terrific player who could be a pro. Um, took took the game uh, on that final drive. And, and that, that time out, we said, look, it's not going to be anything tricky. It's not going to be, uh, it's just going to be a straight line drive. It's going to be either a post up, straight line drive, or someone coming off of multiple screens to catch and shoot. And I, I sort of, if I was a betting man, I thought it was going to be a drive. And we have to contain. But you know what? If they spread the floor, and a great player is going to have the advantage. Hey, what do you said in your opening statement about you know, this process being right on point and on target. Is that sort of what the, the message you gave to this team afterwards? Or? Um, it's sort of. I didn't actually say it that way, but um, we're looking forward to playing on Wednesday. That's what the message is. And, um, and I think you know, it's hard for them to understand it. And I told them the first thing I said was applaud our seniors, please. And we gave our seniors a standing ovation in the locker room. Um, and then we talked about at least I talked about, look, I know it was a short rotation in the second half, but we got to suck it up. We have to be men and prepare to win a game on Wednesday. So that was, that was pretty much the message. Coach, from the beginning of the season to now, your ability to close the game will be was, was mainly, mainly the problem, to be able to close. That process seemed to be working toward what you went eventually started there. Well, I mean, look, and when you put a new team together like we did in the summer, uh, we said we have to learn how to play together, which is a process in itself. And then we have to learn how to win together, which is totally different uh, than we're learning how to play together. And we've gotten closer um, to learning how to win together. What's Kerwin doing to earn so much more key minutes the last couple of Just years? Just his, you know, his, his attitude, his demeanor, his behavior, his, um, he's got a terrific, positive, um, bright sort of personality. You know, you love to see it. Um, every day he comes to practice. He works harder uh, probably than anybody else. I think he probably lost about 20 pounds in the last mm, five, six weeks. And if, if it was up to him, he would say, no, Coach, it was four weeks I lost 20 pounds. <laughs> he worked his tail off, and you could see it. And look, he started off late. <laughs> the guy was our fourth guard before the beginning of the season. And what happens, he, he is injured right the day before the season starts. And it took him, I don't know, six weeks or so to get even back healthy and so he started behind. Um, and so the process was a little bit longer for him, but I'm happy for him, because, only because of his heart and his ability to be a terrific teammate. Eddie, you, you talked about the process before, and obviously there's at least one or more games left, but what if you kind of, you know. Oh, I have to make a big, look, it was a big adjustment for me too. I mean, huge adjustment for me um, from the, in the entire program um, situation. Um, not just basketball. You know, I've been used to, for 20-some years, using just X's and O's and, um, and managing a team, professionals. And this was, you know, slightly, more than slightly different. More than slightly different. Hey, just to follow up real quick, is it that, you know, you have to obviously maybe understand them more, you know, personally? Well, no, you know, first of all, I had, I had a lot of help. You know, I have a lot of support. And I have a lot of people who help me. One person is in the back of the room there who actually hired me and uh, so he's going to take all the blame I don't know if he's going to take the credit he's too good for that but um, I had a lot of help
you know, from Carl Kirshner to Julie Herman to now Sarah Baumgartner and, and all of our assistants and just people in, into our program and people who are outside the program who remember me as a player. So terrific, terrific support. Um, so I've learned to, I've got a, I had a lot of help, I had a lot of help. And it's, you know, kids going to class, kids going to tutoring, the academic part of it, the fundraising part of it, the basketball part of it. Um, you know, it was a big adjustment to wait between games to play. <laughs> I've been used to playing, you know, three games and five nights and that sort of thing. Um, I text my buddy Bernie Bickerstaff uh, during the All-Star break, and I said, geez, you guys are soft. The NBA needs a break to, throughout the season. You need a five-day break. And we don't take breaks in, in, in CAA. Uh, and he texted me back. He said, my man, your break is coming soon, coming pretty soon. So anyway, uh, so, you know, it was some adjustment for me. And I think, you know, uh, I love it. I love the process, even for me. And I'm hitting the trail. As they say, I'm hitting the track running, starting um, once we get through with the tournament. Eddie, the, uh, the last defensive, going into the last defensive sequence, how much thought was given to leaving J.J. on Kilpatrick? He defended him decently, it seemed like. Well, I thought uh, Jerome, when uh, Wally fouled out, we had Jerome on Kilpatrick, I think. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want J.J. on him. No, I think Jerome um, can do better from that distance where he started. And, you know, again, if you don't put a real major, major stopper on a kid like that, he's just going to have an advantage. That's, that's the way it is in basketball. Hey, Coach, talk about how hard is it, especially after it seems like he's gonna, Sean's going to have a slow start, goes over seven, and then kind of turns on the end. How frustrating is that? To say? No, it's not frustrating. It's just a challenge for me to find the right kids to be on the floor, um, to make sure we're getting the right offenses set, to make sure that we're still uh, locking in on defense. So. It's not frustration. It's for me. It's what buttons do I push, and I better not be frustrated. I better be on my P's and Q's to get those things done. And is, is it harder for these guys to, you know, given all the stuff they've had to overcome this season, to get close in these two games but not have it, or is it easier to sort of use these two games? As well, I, yeah. I had a. Sh I've had multiple short talks with Larry Brown, and he, one of the things he said, you know, every kid believes he should play a lot. And it just can't happen. And so I've always, remember in the beginning of the season, I said, look, we could go 11 deep. And it's, you know, it's frustrating for a kid, I think, who thinks he's going to play a lot, doesn't play a lot because the coach has a, another thing in mind because of a rotation. And I just think that they have to understand that and come back and play harder and practice and believe that they're going to get a chance like they've always had a chance. Everyone's had a chance to play. And I just hate to see a kid be a little bit disappointed because he can't play. And in the NBA, it's just the way life is. You know, you're getting paid anyway. But here, kids want to play in front of their, their their classmates and for their school. And I, you know, I feel sorry. I feel bad that they feel disappointed. But I have to get over that. I don't know if that answered your question. Or not. I just felt I had to say that. More questions? Thank you. Thanks.